Welcome to the Ink Stitch Beginner Tutorial Series. In this part, we are going to have a look at the Ink Stitch workflow. It includes the following steps without being too strongly attached to this exact order. Quite a few of the shortcuts used in this tutorial are customly set. Watch the customized video to learn how to establish them. The first thing to do is to create a vector image. You could also use existing images. If you have a PNG image, you can even trace it through path, trace, bitmap. For a brief demonstration, we will create the image by ourselves. To create lines, you can either use the pencil tool, which can be activated with P, or the Bezier tool, enabled with B. You can also use shapes such as the square or the circle. Convert them to a path with shift Control c or the corresponding symbol in the node editor mode. Fill bounded areas with help of the fill tool. The shortcut for this is U. If you install the add-ons, you will have color palettes available. Set the fill color by clicking on them. The stroke color can be changed with shift-click. Now that the image is done, you should save a copy into an other file and hide the first one. We skip this step here. The next step will be to convert lines in such way that Inkstitch will understand how it should be sewn out. At this point, we assume that you know how to create satin columns fills, and running stitches. If not, have a look at the corresponding videos. Set the params as you like, and don't forget to use the underlay.
plan your stitch order carefully, it will have a lot of impact on the quality of your design. While planning the stitch order, you try to avoid jumping stitches and also color changes. You don't want to change colors all the time while stitching out the design. Run the simulator to see if you might need to adjust the direction of some objects. You can also see the direction through the red sparks when in the node editor mode. We have explained them in the customized video. Change the direction through path, reverse, or use a custom shortcut key. InkStitch will stitch objects in exactly the order they appear in your SVG document from lowest to highest in stacking order. If the distance between two objects is long, InkStitch will add a jump stitch between them automatically. It uses the color of the object to determine thread color. So changes in color from one object to the next will result in a thread change. Instruction being added to the embroidery output file. we will need to use the objects panel. We recommend to make heavy use of layers and groups at this point. This will help a lot while reordering objects. Create a group of objects with Ctrl G and move through the object in the desired order. While pushing the next objects in line to the bottom of the group, Attach commands to give InkStitch additional information. Trims, stops, fill, start, and ending points are just some of the options. Watch our visual commands video to get more information. During the whole process, you were already running visualizations through the params dialog. Use the simulator as a standalone or even the print preview to get an impression on how the design will look in the end. Most of the time, the simulator will do the job just fine. But for the fill stitches, the print preview is very helpful, for example, in matter of stitch length and angle. Once you are satisfied with the outcome, save the file to your disk. 
Choose the file format that your machine can read. Don't forget to save the file in the SVG file format, just in case you want to improve your design at a later time. Transfer the file to your machine. Perform a test sew with preferably the same fabric you are planning to use. The fabric will have influence on the outcome of the design. In this way that you most likely will have to adjust your design here and there. Follow this routine until you are happy and ready to embroider on your best piece of fabric in your house.